<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to a very overdue edition of the Seaman Cinema Sit Down. You see what I'm wearing. I got my F Soups hat on. I got my Daddy's Home shirt because Daddy is indeed home because my internet is finally back, and I could finally watch episode one of the new season of one of my favorite TV shows from 2019. So let's waste no time. Pull up a chair, man. Take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in. Spoiler free. Into The Boys. Season 2. Episode 1. The Big Ride. Waiting for this show was torture. Especially because I made sure I moved in before it dropped. Made sure the internet was set up before it dropped. And then couldn't have foreseen the, you know, minor difficulties in the move that I ran into. And then losing the internet for an entire week. Um, it was rough. But like always... Well worth the wait for the boys. I adore this show. It's one of my favorite shows of 2019 um, because it dives into the superhero genre, a genre I love, um, and the comic genre as it, as it comes from a comic book, um, and just gives it to you in a way like you don't really get to see in other superhero genres. Um, the amount of bodies that explode in this TV show um, is just insane, and it, it makes your own head explode, because you're just, like, constantly going, oh, whoa, huh, and I love that stuff, and I love seeing a superhero show that looks at supers the way this show does, they're not all good, some of them are really bad, and they're, you know, the heroes to the public, but are the villains to the show, um, and, and the way superheroes abuse their powers, and, and the fact that they have drugs that can enhance their powers, um, it's just all these really interesting things that creates a really rich world. And when you're given a cast that's as dynamite as this cast is, it was a slam dunk. And maybe one of the fastest starts to any season of television I've ever seen. I mean, you talk about a show starting off with our main character saying goodbye to his girlfriend and then she explodes. Because like I said, bodies explode a lot in this show right in front of him. As a, a super speed human being runs through her. Um, and it's hard to get out to a faster start. And while I absolutely adored and enjoyed episode one, it is a slower start uh, to the boys. Um, it's hard to be faster than that. But do not worry, because the show gives you all the things you love. You might want to cover up your ears if you haven't watched yet, but you know, the, you're definitely going to get laughs. Plenty of gross stuff. Gore. Oh, dude, so much blood. Oh! Oh, that's so much blood. Oh, God. Oh. No, you're just an useless fucking blind guy. Oh. An absolutely mind blowing, head exploding, shocking moments. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Black Noir. Oh! 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 This What happens if, uh, I don't know, if I do this? Oh! Oh! Those things are the reason why I love this show so much because it makes you 
react that way and feel the full scale of it. And episode one doesn't shy away from the humor that the boys has, the fact that you're going to see gore and blood and things that you're not used to seeing. And, you know, it's going to shock you when you see things explode because always. Um, And I love that we get all that stuff in episode one, but I also love that episode one does a really good job of reestablishing where we are with all our characters. The end of season one, the seven is slightly broken. Uh, Translucent, he blew up. Um, Like I said, exploding bodies, lots of them. Um, The Deep was sent off to Sandusky, Ohio, and now the seven are basically down to five. And I like spending time showing where we are. Um, I love that we're getting to see inside more of the the behind-the-scenes of Vought um, and getting to see Giancarlo Esposito. Um, I believe his name is Stan in the show. Um, But getting to see him kind of be, you know, the person that'll kind of replace Elizabeth Shue's Madeline Stilwell. Um, And I like that the episode right away introduces the power struggle into the seven um, because we're given Giancarlo Esposito right at the top um, and kind of don't know very much about him, but we can understand that he's kind of the guy that's in charge to a degree. Um, And then, of course, you have Homelander who thinks the seven is his thing, always has thought it was his thing. And the way he is wrestling with the power of really being able to control the seven without Stillwell around. Um, So you get that in episode one. And I like the moments that you have that are kind of like this struggle between these two. Um, And I just love the way that Giancarlo Esposito um, and uh, Homelander himself, Mr. Anthony Starr, just match wits on screen separately and, you know, when they are on screen together. Um, Also like that we kind of get to see how the seven is being used. We get a fun sequence. Um, You saw if you were watching the reactions uh, with Black Noir. Um, And we get to learn some interesting things about him, which I was like, ooh, that's interesting. Um, And, you know, we get to see a little bit of Queen Maeve. um, And, and again, some of the stuff that Vought and, and... the seven are trying to establish specifically with the military. Um, and obviously, you know, we get to catch up with starlight, um, and where she's at. Um, but we also get introduced to a brand new hero who we've seen in the trailers. Uh, and that is Aya Cash's Stormfront. Um, and I love the way that they introduce her in this episode, um, because she is totally there for one reason and one reason only, and that's herself. Um, and, and getting to see how she already is kind of opposing and forcing her way into the, the seven um, is just a really fun thing to watch. And she is absolute fire on screen. And we only get her for a couple minutes. Um, so I really do like where we're, what we're doing with the seven. And as I mentioned, we get to hang out with Starlight a little bit. Um, and we get to see her in some you know interesting situations. Obviously, her relationship with Homelander strained after season one. We get them kind of thrown together almost right away uh, as we get to see them pay homage uh, to Translucent, who exploded in season one. Um, And that's another thing I love about the boys is that they're able to take things that are going on in the real world or things that you see in the real world and apply it to the show in ways that work for the show, but also are like, hey, here's something that's, you know, current and and like going on in, in the real world. And that, you know, paying homage to Translucent with a memorial. And I hate to say it, but unfortunately we've seen a lot of these types of memorials on TV. And the show really nails kind of grasping that concept. Um, And then, of course, on the other side of Starlight's world are the boys and Huey. Um, And we do get to see where they're at. And it is, (laughs) it's, it's not necessarily enjoyable for the characters, but watching the characters act the way that they have to act inside of the episode I really really enjoyed and of course Huey Campbell played by Jack Quaid really stands out uh, specifically in the scene that they have on a, on a, on a train together or a subway car um, but he, Jack Quaid's just bringing it man like here's a dude who's now like wanted for all sorts of things specifically murder um, you know is being classified as you know, like uh, a terrorist to a degree um, with the rest of the boys. So the way he's acting and the way he is and how Starlight reacts to seeing him the first time, just absolutely nailing what they're setting up with that character. Um, And then, you know, just with the boys in general, they're they're without Billy Butcher. Um, You know, they're hanging out uh, at at like a a gang that uh, have people that Frenchie knows. Um, And 
I love seeing how that situation works within where they're hanging out and where we're at with everybody. I mean, there's a lot of tension specifically between Mother's Milk and, and Huey um, and, you know, and, and even Frenchie to a degree because they don't have a leader right now. Uh, Butcher is MIA. He is not home yet. Um, and I like seeing how the team kind of wrestles with some of that stuff. And the same thing, kind of the power struggle of like, who's in charge if our leader is MIA? Um, and, and that stuff is fun and certainly adds to those characters. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I like that we get to kind of see how they're going to, you know, unfold what's going to be going on in, in the season. Um, and it's one of those things that, again, plays into the, the Seven's power struggle, uh, and specifically with terminology. Things that we're very used to are not referred to the same way in the show. So there's actually stuff about the fact that we refer to people, as we've seen in season one, super terrorists instead of super villains. Um, and we kind of see how they get into that based on the fact that there is a super terrorist act that happens. Um, and the boys kind of can see an opportunity of, hey, maybe if we can figure out how to stop that or help, maybe we can get our lives back. Um, and that's kind of what where they're at as you head to, toward the end of the episode and finally the reemergence of Billy Butcher. So I'm very excited to see where we go in episode two um, now that Butcher is back. Um, and then, of course, the one other character that I didn't really touch on um, was the Deep. Uh, and we do get to see him in Sandusky, Ohio, and certainly gets to play into that uh, humor that the boys is really good at. And it's kind of sad humor um, here, because this is a guy who's basically hit rock bottom. And literally, while I was watching the episode, I was like, oh, man, he is at rock bottom. And then they said out loud in the show, like, I've seen rock bottom before. I'm like, that, yeah, that, nailing that stuff. Um, but what they're going to do with his character, where they seem to be taking it right out the gate very interesting um so i'm all in man season two off and running like i said a slightly slower start as we kind of establish everything but still gave you plenty of moments where you go oh my lord i've never seen that and just the 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 story for me right out the gate is gripping i'm very interested to see where we go in episode two and season two as we continue so there you go man those are the Seaman's non-spoiler thoughts on The Boys, Episode 1, uh, The Big Ride of Season 2. Um, I dug it. Slower start, but doing all the things that I look for in The Boys and has hooked me to where I'm now like, let's get going because daddy's home. Uh, so now you know what I think. I want to know what you're thinking. Uh, you've had a week. Hopefully you're even more caught up than I am as I'm only through one episode. But what'd you think of the first episode of season two of The Boys? Um, if you're a fan of the show, um, did you hope that it was going to maybe try to outdo the way season one started? Are you glad that it kind of reestablished and, and, and let us know where we are with everybody? Um, and, you know, what were the things that made your head <laughs> explode uh, in the episode? If you're going to be super spoilery, just throw a warning so that people know, like, oh, shoot, skip that comment. Um, but let me know everything you're thinking about episode one down below in the comments section. Uh, as always, I look forward to talking to you down there. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, you want to come hang out with the Seaman as we talk the boy season two. Uh, and you haven't yet, you want to show a little love, jump over there. Hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sea Maniacs. Uh, yes, I have a name now, hopefully. Um... But yeah, man, if you want to join along, uh, hit that subscribe button, the little bell that follows that, uh, will give you the alerts. And until next time, when we're talking episode two of season two of The Boys, uh, for the Silly Man Cinema Sit Down, I've been the Silly Man. I'm signing off. Peace. Well, I'll be. You guys are still here. You must be looking for some more content. Well, don't worry. Silly Man's got you covered, man. You got videos like this guy and this guy. And if you haven't yet and you want to come check out all the Silly Man goodies, Join the Cinema Sit Down Squad, man. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell down below that, too, so you can get alerts every time I make new videos.